Welcome to Midweek Prayers from the East Solent and Downs Methodist Circuit in Southern England. I'm sorry for the technical hitches that I seem to have had in doing this live. Uh, so this is a recorded version. Thank you for your patience and thank you for coming back to us. Let's begin with a sentence from the Psalms, from Psalm 130. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits and in his word I hope. A reading from part of Jeremiah chapter 30. Thus says the Lord, I am going to restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob and have compassion on his dwellings. The city shall be rebuilt upon its mound and the citadel set on its rightful site. Out of them shall come thanksgiving and the sound of merrymakers. I will make them many and they shall not be few. I will make them honoured and they shall not be disdained. Their children shall be as of old their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all who oppress them. Their prince shall be one of their own, their ruler shall come from their midst. I will bring him near, and he shall approach me. For who would otherwise dare to approach me, says the Lord. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. I'm going to restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob and have compassion on his dwellings, the Lord promises. Compassion is not the reason, the feeling behind the restoration. It's the activity, the action that is involved with restoring. And there's that description of renewal and restoration. Maybe there's some echoes for us at the moment that there'll be thanksgiving and merrymaking where at the moment we're all too aware that we've had a year where there's been precious little merrymaking, where there's been much sorrow. He promises to make many rather than few an honour rather than disdain. We have honoured people who in the past have been disdained in the past year, but many, we've seldom been able to gather as groups of many, and we look forward to that restoration. But the action by which that happens is of compassion. Compassion is not just a feeling, an emotion, but the action of putting things right, of offering help and mercy and love and care. And so in our prayers, we're aware that it is a year yesterday since the first lockdown and we bring those things to mind. As we pray I'll leave quite a bit of space and silence for you to pray in your own way. Unfortunately with this being recorded we can't put them in the chat but name names either in the silence of your own heart or aloud as you watch this. prayer written for yesterday for the 23rd, the anniversary of the first lockdown. It is so hard, loving God, to express all that is in our hearts just now. So much has made us sorrowful. 
and we commend to you all who have died and all who mourn, all who are still ill and all who are separated from loved ones. So much has made us anxious and we bring to you all who are burdened by worries about their health, their jobs, their education or their finances. So much has made us thankful. The care of the NHS, the vaccine. The care and help of so many in their communities. It is so hard, loving God, to express all that is in our hearts. But you know it all and we put our trust in you. Amen. A prayer from Florence Nightingale, noted for her care and compassion. In our devotion to the needs of others, O God, let us not neglect the wisdom of your counsel. In the midst of our work, let us not lose sight of your great purposes. In our path of service, let us not snatch the management of the world from your hands. Amen. And so we pray for those who are on our hearts and minds at the moment, those whom we know who are still sick, who are recovering, those who mourn and remember those whom we have lost. We pray for Andrew and for Margaret. And we pray for Ginny. We pray for ourselves and others who care for them. that you would give us an active compassion. We pray for all who work in practical ways to make your compassion known to your people. With the Methodist Church in this country, we're asked to pray for Christians around the world, especially today in Fiji, Samoa and Tonga. And in this country, we pray for the Plymouth and Exeter district.
God of yesterday. We thank you for the rich heritage of our faith in writing, music and architecture. And in the examples set by those who have followed you down the centuries. God of today, we praise you that we meet you in our daily lives, in worship and through the kindness of others, in the ordinary and the extraordinary. God of tomorrow, we thank you that you will be with us as we journey onwards. Help us to trust you and to turn to you in faith for you will travel with us every step of the way. Amen. Oh God, as we wait in the silence to know your presence, we're reminded of your faithfulness your compassions and your promise that we will be your people and you will be our God. We draw our prayers together in the prayer for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us and for your patience. As I say, I'm sorry this had to be a recorded version. We do hope to see you live next week.